Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher Lovejoy. I'm a junior doctor doing research applying machine learning to healthcare. And today I want to talk about five of my favorite cool applications of artificial intelligence in healthcare that are happening right now. So there's a lot of hype and talk about the ways in which artificial intelligence is gonna revolutionize healthcare. But I want to focus on concrete examples where it is already being used. So the first example is a company called Edge Health, who created a machine learning model for scheduling operations in theatres. They found that by developing this tool and rolling it out across the hospital trust, they were able to do 40 extra cases in theatre every week, which equates to £100,000 worth of extra activity in the same theatres with the same staff. Now obviously this is pretty cool because it means you can do more operations in less time, you'll have shorter waiting lists, and this will lead to better health outcomes because people who might suffer consequences while they're waiting for an operation may then have that operation at an earlier date. I've deliberately picked this first example as what I would consider an unsexy example of AI in healthcare because a lot of the things we hear about in the media are things about how AI is going to replace doctors because it can look at skin lesions or it can look at retinal scans and it can do that better than doctors can, or so the headline claim. And it's easy to think that this is where most of the impact is going to be had in these very complex domains where they're going to beat doctors at something that doctors have been doing for years. Whereas actually I think a lot of the really interesting uses of AI in healthcare healthcare are going to be more in what we would consider a bit more mundane tasks. So a lot of things within operational aspects of healthcare, so scheduling theatres, analysing workflows of patients through the hospital. Um, and there's another example actually which is predicting people who are going to attend their appointments and who aren't. So one issue that we have in the healthcare system is that if someone doesn't show up for their appointment, it costs a lot of money because we still need to have the doctor or nurse there in case they do turn up the appointment. We have the premises and all the other costs associated with having that appointment ready, but then it's not being utilized because no one's coming. So there's another bit of research looking at trying to predict who those people who aren't going to attend are, and then you can send them a text or give them a phone call and that increases the chance of coming. And you can save in the region of a hundred or more pounds for each person that you're able to encouraged to attend an appointment who may have otherwise not attended or found someone else to then replace that slot. So all in all, I think it's a really cool area for AI to be applied. If you're interested in reading about that paper, predicting attendance, then I've written a summary of that paper at chrislovejoy.me forward slash attendance. I'll leave a link on the screen just here. Um, feel free to check that out now or at the end of the video. So the second example is a project done by the Google Health team, and it's looking at trying to predict who's going to develop something called acute kidney injury. So for those of you not familiar, acute kidney injury is basically when the kidney stops functioning well. Um, there's many different potential causes for this, so it can be if you have a bad infection, if you have a low blood pressure, or if you have something that's causing damage to the kidney. It can be quite a serious problem, and it's not uncommon for patients in hospital to develop an acute kidney injury. The treatment tends to be giving IV fluids and monitoring the response in terms of the blood markers to those fluids. But what's really interesting about the Google paper is that they're looking at trying to predict the development of AKI before somebody actually goes on to develop it. Now obviously if we can predict the development of disease, that's really interesting because then we can switch our management from reactive once a disease has developed into proactive of treating before the disease has actually even occurred. Now people have tried to develop predictive models for AKI as well as other diseases in the past, but the main problem is making a system that actually predicts it accurately. Now this work by Google is better than any previous models that have been developed, but there's still this issue of being able to accurately predict AKI. So in this model trained by Google, the positive predictive value was one third. And what that means is that for every time the algorithm says there is an AKI, only one of those will actually go on to develop AKI. Two of them will be false flags. Now the issue with this is that there is the potential for harm if you treat somebody who maybe would never have gone on to develop an AKI. Because let's say you decide to give them fluids and actually they wouldn't have had an AKI and the fluids make them more unwell then obviously you've caused harm. And likewise, you can make an argument that maybe some sort of condition uh, will have been thought about, but actually when the algorithm suggests that maybe it's an AKI, you think less about that other condition because you think, well, this might be the, the cause of this raised blood test marker, for example. And while this is really groundbreaking research and it's super exciting, it shows some of the challenges of trying to make a predictive model to be used in healthcare. Because anytime you're trying to predict something, you can't be certain, so you're working with probabilities. So there's always gonna be that challenge around that. So I've also written a short summary on this paper. If you're interested in reading that, then you can see it at chrislovejoy.me forward slash AKI, and I'll leave a link just across the bottom of the video here. Um, feel free to check that out as well. So the third case I wanna talk about is the identification of a drug called Halicin uh, as a potential antibiotic. So this was some research done by a group in MIT. So they trained a neural network which looks at known molecules and tries to identify what their 
effects might be in terms of antibiotic properties. And they found this molecule that was a CJUN N-terminal kinase inhibitor had some antibiotic properties. They then looked into that and confirmed that it did have some properties against E. coli and other bacteria. So this is pretty exciting because there's a lot of issues with antibiotic resistance at the moment. And unfortunately, the incentives of pharmaceutical companies aren't fully aligned because, for example, if you develop an antibiotic drug, typically it's going to develop bacterial resistance. So the lifetime of that antibiotic might be 10, 20 or 30 years which therefore means you're not gonna make as much money once you've developed that drug, which you can then reinvest into developing new drugs. So it tends to be the case that pharmaceutical companies will look at other types of drugs um, where maybe once the drug's been developed, it will last for a much longer period of time. So if artificial intelligence is able to identify new drug candidates that can have antibiotic properties, then that can dramatically reduce the costs of developing those. And it means that we may well discover alternative antibiotics that we can then use. So the drug discovery process is known to have a very high failure rate and it's very, very expensive. And there's lots of ways that artificial intelligence could accelerate that process and make things cheaper and more efficient. So for example, as well as repurposing existing molecules, it can also help us to identify other potential molecules that we might want to develop. It can be used to predict potential side effects and it can also increase the success of clinical trials by identifying the appropriate populations to be testing the drugs in. So these are all reasons why I'm quite excited about the use of AI in drug discovery and I'm very optimistic that in hopefully 5, 10, 15, 20 years time we'll see a whole host of new drugs that have been developed using artificial intelligence and which will be improving health outcomes throughout the world. And if you're interested in reading more about AI and drug discovery, I've written a short blog post at chrislovejoy.me forward slash drugs. I'll put the link on the screen here. Um, so feel free to check that out as well. So the fourth example I want to talk about is the triaging of chest X-rays. So chest X-rays are the most commonly performed imaging procedure worldwide. It's something in the region of 15 million chest X-rays performed in the UK every day, although don't quote me on that number. And typically these chest X-rays are analyzed by people in the emergency department or people on the wards who've requested the scans, but also a lot of hospitals have a policy whereby the radiologists will then review all of the chest X-rays that get performed and look for findings. But the issue of having so many chest X-rays performed is that there's always a massive backlog of chest X-rays to be analyzed by radiologists and it means that a chest x-ray potentially with critical findings on might not get seen for more than a week and it's not that helpful to know about the critical finding maybe a week or more later because actually in some cases that could be the difference between life and death. But a cool way where AI could be used is to triage those chest x-rays so that the ones it thinks might have a critical finding on get shown to the radiologist first and that then means that the time taken to review that critical finding is much less. And a provisional early study looking at this did find that the average time taken to see a critical finding was reduced from in the region of nine days down to about two and a half, three days. And there are various groups trying to make algorithms to diagnose based on chest x-rays. But what's nice about this is it doesn't require you to be as precise as that. Diagnosing on a chest X-ray is a bit more of a challenging technical problem to do. But if you're just trying to say that it's potentially a scan with a finding on versus a normal scan, then it's actually a bit easier to do. And we can optimize the algorithm to be very sensitive to there potentially being a pathology and flag that to the radiologist. So again, it's maybe a little bit less sexy than trying to identify exactly what the pathology is based on a chest X-ray. And those are the ones that you typically see in the headlines of, of this algorithm can analyze chest X-rays better than humans can, but this ability to triage can be extremely helpful. And I do know that this is currently being trialed at a few different hospitals in the UK. I imagine it's similar abroad. Um, so we'll see how things go. Hopefully if it's effective, we'll then see that rolled out across the UK and in other countries as well. The fifth case that I want to talk about is something that's quite topical right now. It is currently the 7th of April, and that is of course helping in the fight against COVID-19. So there's many potential ways in which we can use AI to help fight COVID-19. One example that I really like is the development of drugs to help treat COVID-19. And there is an example of this, which is that Benevolent AI, a startup in London, have identified a molecule that uh, was traditionally used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, which has the potential to help treat COVID-19. Um, I think it's called bacitinib or something along those lines. Some other ways in which AI has the potential to help with COVID-19 is to help us to predict the spread of disease. So at the moment, a lot of the policy is guided based on models trying to predict how it's going to spread and what sort of numbers we're going to hit and when. And there's the potential for machine learning to be used in those models. However, the main challenge for doing this is the type of data you have available and the types of information that you need to know. So at the moment, we don't really know exactly what the mortality rate is. We don't really know what the rate of spread of the disease is because it's still pretty early days and we're seeing a lot of different patterns across different places in the world. It's a case of trying to identify what are the relevant factors for the rate of spread, for the mortality rate, and trying to build models using those. 
The issue if you're not too confident on those is that you end up with very large confidence intervals and it's not that helpful to say that a projection is going to between one value and another value when sometimes the gap between those values is quite large. There's been a lot of discussion about using CT scans to diagnose COVID and using machine learning analysis of those CT scans. I've heard quite a lot of criticisms of this, arguing that it's not actually that accurate at diagnosing it and it's probably more efficient just to do the tests rather than to be giving everybody a CT scan. Another potentially interesting way to use machine learning is to try and identify who's going to respond more negatively to COVID-19 infection versus who's gonna respond more positively. We know that some people have serious illness, some people are a bit more mild in terms of their symptoms and some people apparently don't have any symptoms at all. And we know that generally age tends to increase your risk of having a more serious complication although we are seeing younger people who have these kind of serious complications so if you can have a machine learning model that can identify earlier before someone deteriorates which group they're likely to be in that's something that could be super helpful to do the question is what sort of biomarkers and tests might be useful to enable us to do that and is it something that actually is possible or not i think right now we haven't seen a large impact of machine learning on covid19 uh, i think it'll be interesting to see how things go um, hopefully it will be able to help us in, in the fight against covid19 but only time will tell so those are five of my favorite applications of AI in healthcare happening right now in 2020. I've tried to pick quite a mix of examples so that we can explore various of the principles and, and the ways in which AI can be applied. And I've deliberately tried to pick examples that are either being used or are close to being used in healthcare at the moment. What about you? What are your favorite uses of AI in healthcare? What are you most excited about? What are you most intrigued and interested about? Are there any things you think that I've missed out from my list that I should have included? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to leave a comment in the description below. Don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to this channel, and I will see you in the next video.